Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's webinar. My name is Allison Moe and I am the Marketing Manager here at Catalyst Connection. Today our presenter, John Santavi, co-founder and CEO of Wuvavi, will be discussing ways to build a culture of cyber, cyber security awareness. Wuvavi is the leading employee cyber awareness platform for small and medium-sized businesses. With almost 10 years in manufacturing and five years in information technology, John is well-versed in process and security. John teaches employees and executives what processes to follow to keep their organization and themselves cyber safe. John is a Western PA native and University of Pittsburgh alum. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box and we will review them at the end of the webinar. Thanks, John. Thank you, Allison. And thanks to everybody else for uh, making time today. Um, so we're going to focus on building a culture of cybersecurity awareness in manufacturing. Um, so we're going to give you an introduction of myself. I'm going to talk about some of the different attack vectors, um, targeting uh, the people in the organization and in, in a manufacturing organization. Um, we're going to talk about why we need to invest in the employees to protect these things and to protect against these attacks. Um, and then we're going to talk about how we create a culture of cybersecurity awareness. Um, and then we'll leave time for Q&A at, at the end. Um, so my goals for the webinar are for you to learn why employees need a culture of cybersecurity awareness and how to build a culture of cybersecurity awareness. Um, so again, as Allison said, I've spent about 10 years in manufacturing. Um, I've worked for a company, Rockwell Automation, it says like Alan Bradley, uh, Lawton in, uh, on the plant floor with process and simulation. And over the last about five years, we got into the IT field and, and we started this company, um, Wolvavi, that uh, focuses on teaching employees how to um, recognize and identify red flags and, and protect their organization. Uh, so we've trained tens of thousands of employees, um, if not more, and um, probably hundreds of organizations. And um, through that, we've you know, we started as a as just a training project, a single training module. And as we started growing and started training more organizations and more employees, we we found it was um, we learned a lot about building a culture of cybersecurity awareness. And we learned a lot about uh, training those employees. It's not it can't just be a one-time training. And that's really what our focus is today is uh, is teaching you how to. Uh, how to help your employees to, to uh, protect your, your systems. Um, so let's start with some of, of the uh, attack vectors. So of course there's physical attacks, there are social engineering attacks, um, which are probably the most thought of types of attacks when it comes to people in the organization, um, and then viruses and malware. So I'm going to go into each of these a little bit more in depth. Um, so with physical security, one of the big ones are, are office visitors. Um, so that you know, commonly an office visitor is somebody, a salesperson or um, you know, a partner that's coming to an office, or it might be you know, your HVAC person or, or a plumber. But it could also be somebody posing as, as one of those, those uh, people. So um, that's, that's an attack vector that I don't think everyone thinks about all the time. You might tell your office manager that they need to sign people in, but does everybody else know those rules? And does everybody else know that um, everyone needs to sign in, they need to sign out, um, there needs to be a record of, of who those people are, and what if they go through a different door? What if in, on your manufacturing plant one of the bay doors are open? You know, how do you manage that process? And are those uh, plant floor, people on the plant floor, do they understand the rules and, and the guidelines and, and why you um, have these types of policies in place? Um, Physical records are, are always important and always a target, um, you know, whether it's how you dispose of physical records to uh, how you store them. I'll show you a good example of that in a little bit. Um, tailgating is uh, whenever an employee 
opens a door and holds a door for somebody else and lets them in without signing a badge or without uh, without you know, scanning a badge as they go into the door. And this is a really a challenge for a lot of organizations because uh, it is a social norm to hold the door for someone and, and you really uh, don't want to just close the door in some space and you don't want to um, keep them out of uh, out because you're, you know, you're taught and you're raised to hold the door. Uh, so, but that creates a security risk. So it's really important for employees to understand why that's a security risk and what you need to do to um, to mitigate that risk, which is enforce those employees to either scan their badge or, or sign in so they can't walk right behind you. Um, you know, unlocked computers and lost or stolen devices are pretty self-explanatory there. So this is an example that, that happened to me uh, when a couple years ago. Um, we were out in, in uh, at an office in Pittsburgh, and I looked down from my office, and there was this uh, truck that had, it was business records management. Their tagline was, your peace of mind is our priority, and it went on to talk about how they um, store and, and or how they transport all of the documents and keep them safe, and they're compliant with all these different types of things. Um, but the gentleman that was that was driving the truck had dumped the the bin that he was uh, carrying, and there were documents everywhere. Um, and so this this person probably thought his job was you know, a truck driver, but really he needed to understand that by not taking this seriously and not um, transporting the documents slowly from where he was at to his truck, he's put his their customers at risk. You know, everyone in this building that was counting on them to securely dispose of these documents. Uh, there could be HIPAA violations, there could be other fines, and he's put his own company at risk. So teaching employees how they play an actual role in cybersecurity uh, can help them to be more careful and help them to, to manage things correctly. Um, social engineering is definitely the hottest topic. Phishing is, is something that we, we talk about a lot, um, and we do a lot of simulated phishing attacks. Um, and it's amazing what employees will, will click on. Uh, and we get a lot of feedback from, from the folks that we work with that say, you know, employees will click on anything. There, there's no point in even in teaching them. And I, I don't think that's true. Um, I think that employees, you know, they're not stupid. They're not, um, it's, it's not that they're just, just clicking on anything, but they are really busy and they do have jobs that they're focused on. So when an email pops up, they're not thinking about all of the risks around them. So teaching them what those risks are and, and simulating attacks against them helps them to better understand what the risks can be and, and how they can better uh, mitigate those risks. Um, whaling and, and spear phishing are other uh, techniques that we're seeing increase um, where they're much more targeted attacks, much more difficult to identify. Um, Pretexting, baiting, quid pro quo are all um, important social engineering attacks that uh, employees do need to be aware of. And then viruses and malware. So I won't go into all of these in depth, but um, you know, these are all, there's a lot of risks with, with these from just the, from the breach and the fines, but also uh, you know, if, if you have some ransomware attack, then you're probably going to see a lot of downtime in, on the plant floor. Uh, so making sure that you're protecting against these things and uh, it can really mitigate the risks and um, help the organization. Uh, so I'm going to talk about why you want to invest in your employees to protect against all of these attacks. Um, I think I mentioned before that cybersecurity awareness traditionally has been you know, one-time training or, or once-a-year training. Uh, and you kind of check a box and, and you leave. And uh, that, that is, I guess that's how training has always worked. Uh, but with cybersecurity, it's a little bit different. Uh, all of these attacks that I just showed you are really ongoing attacks, and they're ongoing threats that are happening all of the time. So that means that employees and organizations have to be on their toes all of the time, and they have to be able to identify these, these attacks all of the time. Uh, so when we talk about creating a culture of cybersecurity, that's really what we're focused on, is not just giving, allowing employees to um, you know, take a one-time training. We want to build a culture of cybersecurity so that they, can, they are always thinking about 
cybersecurity, and they are always thinking about how they play a role in it and how to identify attacks and, and uh, support the organization from that standpoint. Uh, most of it, or, or all of it from the employee standpoint, isn't hard. Uh, it's just a matter of making them aware and, uh, and creating that culture around them so that they know that they're, they're able to do the right things. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to talk about um, a couple different examples of how these play out in a manufacturing uh, organization. Um, so of course there's a, a corporate office for a manufacturing company and then there's, there's the plant floor and there's different risks for uh, each side of that, uh, that, uh, the company. Um, so CEO fraud, which is uh, also known as business email compromise and something that we're, we're seeing more and more um, it, the CEO fraud is when a cyber criminal impersonates an executive, uh, typically the CEO, and asks somebody else in the organization to do something for them. Uh, commonly, it's trans do a wire transfer. So that might look like a um, you know a hacker would fish the CEO and gain access to their email account so that they can impersonate them, or they might just create a Gmail account or a Yahoo that looks like it's coming from them, uh, and then go ahead and email the CFO and they'll say, hey, I'm out of town this week, uh, traveling for business. I had We have to get a wire transfer in today and I'm not going to be able to do it. Could you get that done for me in the next 30 minutes? And they'll include some wire transfer details. Um, the CFO or the, the accountants that are in the organization will say, well, yes, the, I want to, um, you know, we want to impress the CEO. It's difficult to follow up with them because they're overseas. They probably don't have a phone connection, and there's a timeline set here. So uh, most often, the, or I should say very often, the uh, employees will actually make that tra transfer. Uh, they think that they're helping the CEO, but sooner or later they find out that uh, the bank account is overseas and the money is lost. Um, so. CEO fraud is something that we're, we're seeing more and more with, with all types of different organizations and industries. Um, and it might not just transfer wire fraud, it may, or it may not target a wire fraud, it can also target things like W-2s, um, you know, IP, or any other important assets the organization hold, can, holds. You know, W-2 goes on the black market for anywhere from, it could be a couple dollars to you know, 10 or 20 dollars for higher paid employees or executives. So um, for somebody overseas where cost of living is very low, getting a few W-2s can really, uh, from various organizations, can really uh, have a meaningful impact for them. And that's why they target things like that. Uh, customer list is another big, uh, big risk for um, manufacturing organizations. Uh, so Customer list can be lost if an employee leaves and they take it with them. It could be targeted by a competitor or an international competitor. Um, but really, I think the one of the bigger risks from a cybersecurity standpoint is for for your customers. So if you're familiar with a third-party risk assessment or if you've ever seen a third-party risk assessment, uh, the reason is that, that you as a smaller business or as a um, supplier to somebody else can put their business at risk. So they do third-party risk assessments to make sure that all of their uh, vendors are protecting their assets. So if a, a cyber criminal targets your company and they're able to pull a customer list, then they might see you're servicing some larger organization and be able to use that to um, to gain access to them. So once they gain access to you, then you could be sort of a Trojan horse for them to uh, enter that, that larger organization. So on the plant floor, the risks can be very different and the, and the attacks can be very different. Um, so one of the ones that I always found interesting, especially when I, I was working in manufacturing, was with production variation. Um, if a hacker is able to take over a, something on the plant floor, even just something small, um, they can cause some type of variation, which, you know, at the, which could cause downtime. Uh, it could cause damage to the organization or the people, but uh, it could also cause defects that that lead to a recall, that lead to safety hazards, um, and and cause really 
rip, a ripple effect for um, your for all of your customers. Then, of course, the big one is intellectual property, and that's happened for a lot of folks around Western PA. Um, I think we're all familiar with what's happened in the steel industry in the last few years, um, and IP is extremely valuable for for us uh, because we invest so much into it, or our, our customers invest so much into it, and it's valuable then for um, you know, international or foreign uh, governments and, and competitors that want to take that information and, and use it to minimize their costs for producing the similar products. Uh, so protecting that intellectual property from the plant floor uh, can be very, very uh, important. So let's talk about the, the cost of these attacks uh, just to give you a, a few high-level uh, costs here. So forensic ex examinations uh, can be very expensive. The notification of your customers, uh, you know, credit monitoring for customers, compliance fines, liability of fraud charges, uh, and then and those are really general for most organizations. But for manufacturing, it can be um, even worse. With downtime. Um, you know, it could be a few minutes or a few hours, which we know can cost uh, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or more, but it could be days or, or more if, or more serious um, attacks. And then the brand damage and lost contracts kind of go together. Uh, you know, if you are saying that you're compliant to some certain standards that your customers require, and then you have an attack, that can lead to a lost contract. So um, making sure that, that you... Uh, invest in your employees to prevent all of those different examples that I gave you um, can really help to mitigate all of these costs and these lost contracts. So I want to talk about why uh, small and medium-sized manufacturers are at a particular risk for all of these things. One of the big ones is that there is a lack of time, budget, and expertise to implement comprehensive security defenses. Uh, so I had talked about the, the third-party risk assessments earlier, where the larger organizations want to make sure that all of their vendors are secure, because those vendors pose a security risk to them if a hacker uses them to, to gain access to, to the, uh, the big customer. Um, so with that, with that in mind, a large company probably spends millions or tens of millions of dollars or more on their, their cybersecurity budgets, and that makes it very difficult for a hacker to gain access to them. Uh, but a smaller company doesn't. They might do very little with, with cybersecurity. They probably don't. A lot of them don't train their employees. They might not um, back things up. They, there's a lot of different... Uh, I guess, different places where the small and medium-sized organizations uh, skip over because of a lack of time, budget, and expertise to do those things. And that puts them at a bigger risk, and it makes it easier for a hacker to gain access to those small and medium-sized manufacturers uh, where there can be a, a financial gain just with them, but then also with, with all of their customers that they, they supply. Uh, often these small and medium-sized manufacturers have no dedicated IT security specialist on their payroll, uh, which can, can lead to challenges. Is a lot of times an IT, somebody that has a, a background in IT does not have the, uh, same, the background necessary to be uh, solid in, in security as well. So those, most organizations do well to have uh, multiple resources that can specialize in these things and work together. Uh, there's a last lack of risk awareness, and that's with employees, but with the entire organization, you know, from the executive level on down. Uh, there's a lack of employee training, uh, and if there is some type of employee training, it's usually a once a year check a box type of thing. Failure to keep security defenses updated. You know, so if you make an investment now, 
those things could those could be out of date or in a few weeks or a few months. So making sure that you keep those updated uh, over time is very important. And then often find outsourcing security to an unqualified contractor or systems administrator uh, causes small and medium-sized manufacturers to uh, not be as secure as they, they could be. So I really want to focus on, so we talked about uh, different risk or attack vectors. We talked about um, a few examples of, of what that means to a, a manufacturer. Uh, so I want to focus on how we can create a culture of cybersecurity awareness. Uh, and I told you the, the reason this is so important is that cybersecurity isn't a one-time event. You know, it's an ongoing, never-ending, and increasingly, uh, increasingly aggressive attack. And so our people have to be aware of that, and they have to be able to recognize potential threats and, and how to um, how to protect against them. You know, if, they, if you just train an employee once a year, that's probably not going to be enough to create a culture of awareness where they're always thinking about it and always making the best decisions. So we've, in our practice where we've done this for, for many different organizations, we've boiled down creating a culture of awareness into four main points. Um, the first one is, is creating a purpose to believe in, and I think that's probably one of the most important things. Um, I'll go into a lot more depth than that in a little bit. Uh, in, executives and managers in an organization have to lead by example whenever they create a culture of awareness. Um, they, can't, they can't take the easy way out for the sake of time or, or some other excuse because that starts to show the organization that aware, or security is not that important to them. Employees have to be trained and, and made aware of all of the guidelines and rules as part, of, as part of creating this culture of awareness. And then finally, all of these things have to be continually communicated within the organization so that everybody understands you know, as there are changes or as there are events, what they need to be, be looking out for. As you can see, I, I believe that the creating a culture of cybersecurity awareness really starts at the top and it disseminates throughout the organization. Uh, so the first part of that is creating a purpose to believe in. And that, of course, starts with the CEO, or often a CEO and a, a CIO or IT manager. Um, so, so creating a purpose to believe in you know, is sounds a little bit, it might sound a little bit off with cybersecurity. You know, that's not your core business, and, and why is that, why does that need to be baked into your vision or, or you know, the purpose that you, you share with your employees? But you're, I'm sure for all of you, your goal is not to make a dollar, you know, tomorrow and be out of business. Your goal is to, uh, to build a strong business with a strong foundation that can grow for years and decades to come. So for a C, and cybersecurity is not going away in the next five, 10, or decades you know, down the road. So creating a culture, it means baking that um, idea of security into your vision, um, which is as you, as you um, grow as an organization, you have to keep this front of mind so that you can protect yourself, you can protect your employees, and you can protect your customers. From the CEO, you have to uh, start to disseminate that through the rest of the executive team so that they understand what their role is within the organization. Uh, so for a CFO, what's important to them? Why, what, is their, what is a vision that they can believe in and they can place importance in so that they can actually change their behavior when it comes to security? Uh, so we see often with, with folks on this side of the business that um, you know, after a cybersecurity breach, the top line and the bottom line are never going to look the same. And so creating a purpose for them to believe in is, is showing them that and showing them that uh, if they do not and if their team does not uh, participate or, or uh, do things correctly, then that's going to have a major impact on the financial uh, 
uh, statements for the organization. Of course, the CIO has to play an important role in this in understanding um, what security what security means for the organization, what it means for the technology within the organization, and how you budget and prioritize for these, these investments. Um, the COO has to understand how policy impacts their operations of the organization and how the operations impact policy. Uh, so as they put these things into place and, and share it with, with the employees, they need to make sure that you know, it fits with all of the other um, rules and guidelines that they've set forth. They, a lot of times, I've seen a lot of statistics that say the sales team and the HR team are the biggest risk from an employee cybersecurity standpoint. Um, and I think the reason, especially on the sales side, is that sales folks are, are often very focused on sales, which they should be. They're moving around all of the time. They, they use remote devices, which are just a, increase the risks of them causing a, um, some type of a, uh, an issue. Um, so building a purpose for them to believe in is, is critical to building a culture of cybersecurity within the whole organization. Um, so, if, so for this, I, I really focus on teaching your sales leader and your sales team what a cybersecurity breach would mean to, to sales and to their salary and to their paycheck. Uh, you know, if you have a breach, you're going to your brand's going to be damaged. Sales or contracts that are in the funnel are going to be lost. Leads are going to decrease. You know, your renewals are going to go down. Uh, and so, salespeople need to understand that the things that you're teaching them about cybersecurity and, and through the employee training uh, really do play a role in in their um, efforts. So again, the first part of this is create a purpose to believe in. So the second step of creating a culture of cybersecurity awareness is uh, to lead by example. And I think the, the best way to show what I mean for this is to give you an example of, of that I see often where um, that may not be not be the case. So we so a lot of organizations have moved to not allowing removable storage or removable media like a USB drive. So let's take, for example, a, a sales team at a conference where there's a manager and a salesperson standing at a booth and the manager has to go present a presentation in a few minutes. Um, now, his, if his computer's down and he, for whatever reason he needs to get the presentation from his computer to his employee's computer, uh, so the easiest way to do that would be to grab a flash drive and transport the, the file to the employee's um, computer. But, of course, that's a risk, and it goes against a guideline set in a lot of organizations. So they should use whatever the approved transfer system is. But what we'll often see is that uh, the sales leader or the manager will grab a flash drive off of the booth next to them, and use that to transfer the files. Uh, so that's one small example. And, and while that may not be the biggest issue or the biggest risk that's going to cause the downfall of the organization, little things like that add up. So that salesperson sees that the uh, manager doesn't care about that policy and he doesn't care about some other policy. And then as time, those things add up and your, all the investment that you make into creating a culture of cybersecurity awareness uh, falls to the ground from, from the bottom up. Uh, so leading by example is extremely important in creating this culture, uh, and it's, it's really the only way. So again, we have to set a vision that every department and every, every executive can believe in, and then those executives and managers have to lead by example for the whole organization. So the next, uh, the next step is teaching employees what your policies are and what your guidelines are. Um, and that's, again, I, I guess key to all of this is um, your, your employees being aware and, and uh, knowing what they're doing. So uh, give you an example of how we do that. We provide 
training modules for various topics from you know, physical security and, and social uh, engineering, social media management, um, you know, secure Wi-Fi access, all of the important topics that an employee should be aware of. We provide training on that. We simulate phishing attacks on employees and then we track and monitor their progress over time. And we do that continuously throughout the year. And, and that's part of, and that is really important for these employees. So if they just take a training once a year, um, it, it is helpful and it's better than nothing, uh, but we, we really recommend providing it continuously. So we provide short modules anywhere from two to five minutes where you can just assign one per month or one per quarter and allow your employees to um, you know, learn tidbits that they can really remember and really understand. And, and as they get that every, every few weeks, every few months, They'll, they'll realize how important this cybersecurity thing is to the organization, um, and that's part of building this culture of, of awareness. Some of the topics are that, that are important to cover, whether, you know, if you're building this, even building this uh, security awareness internally, and you know, being suspicious of emails, I think that's probably uh, one of the biggest things. And then verifying links. So if a lot of employees don't realize that you can hover over a link and see where it's leading you to, or, or they don't realize that you should do that on, on every link. Um, you know, strong password management, so teaching not just – employees should reset their passwords according to your policies, but they also understand, have to understand what a good strong – what a good password is. And they also have to understand that they should not be using the same password that they use for their Facebook for your systems, because uh, if or whatever other things they use personally, because if those are attacked, then that can uh, share information that can be used then to get an access uh, to your systems. Employees need to be cautious of attachments, so teaching them uh, to be, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, be aware of who a sender is in an email. Be cautious of the attachments that are in it, and if they don't know who a sender is and they don't check to verify it's their exact email, then they, they certainly should not open those attachments. Uh, keeping computers up to date, using secure Wi-Fi only, so employees need to understand how to recognize secure Wi-Fi, especially a salesperson or a, a work-from-home person that's commonly working from a, a coffee shop. And they also under, have to understand that the risks of working on a public Wi-Fi network, and that they, it may not be the best time to transfer a, a secure or confidential document. Um, identity verification and using only approved software, that's another tough one. Uh, people always want to find ways to, to get around the, so they can use the things that they want to use. So teaching them why it's important to only use approved software is, is uh, a key. Okay, so we talked about um, we talked about creating a purpose to believe in for ex executives. We talked about making sure that those executives and their management team leads by example. We talked about training the employees continuously throughout the year, and finally, we have to build communication within the organization to make sure that uh, this becomes that employees know what all of the policies and guidelines are. They know where to find them, and they know what the risks are for. Uh, that pop up throughout the year. So creating and maintaining these policies, everything from an acceptable use policy, and I recommend updating that at least annually and having your employees look at it annually. I think most organizations and employees see it once when they're onboarded, but that policy changes and technology changes, so making sure that they're aware of, of those changes are, are key. Uh, social media policy, which is becoming uh, even more important as uh, as different generations enter the workforce. Uh, it, it's you know if you're on a manufacturing floor and you don't realize that taking a selfie and having uh, some important documents behind you or taking a selfie of, of some process that that you don't want anyone to see could show uh, some information that's that's confidential. Um, they're very likely to do that. So putting a 
social media policy into place and teaching those employees uh, how to follow that can be can prevent some of those those risks uh, having a physical access and security policy how to handle information and transfer information uh, having employees sign off, off on all of these policies so that uh, you can if you ever see an issue or, you, or really what we, we like to show is uh, in our in our uh, technology we track how many people click a phishing link and clicking one may not um, require a follow-up every time we, we provide instant training but if you start to see an employee that continually clicks phishing emails and continually uh, does things that disrupt the security of the organization it's good to have uh, it's good to go and follow up with them and talk to them about uh, why this is important. And that, again, reinforces that culture of cybersecurity awareness. But also, if you have them sign off on all of these policies and guidelines, you can take that to them and say, hey, this is part of, of what you've agreed to do for us, and, and this is why it's important. Um, I think this is key, is, is having these conversations in your management meetings and your employee meetings. So once you've created that purpose to believe in and, and you've had a meeting to talk to your executive team about cybersecurity and you've talked to your management team and you've talked to your employees, you have to make sure that that happens throughout the year, not just through the training programs, but save a minute in all of your management meetings to say, hey, this is something that we're focused on this month and you know, here's a new tip that you should understand and your employees should understand. And that helps the management team to understand the importance and lead by example. And then it helps them to go to their employee meetings and have the same conversation with the employees you know, every week or every month, however often you do that. Um, so the objectives of the webinar were for you guys to learn why employees need a culture of cybersecurity awareness and how to build a culture of cybersecurity awareness. So I hope that the, this uh, gave you a good enough overview and went deep enough to share more of that with you. Um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to call or email. Um, we, have a, we write in depth on this topic a lot on our website, so you'll see that um, on our blog page. And, and, uh, and so don't, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, John. Does anybody have any questions? We had a few come in during the presentation. However, if you um, did not already type them in, you can put them in the chat box. So one of the questions we had come in, um, what's the top cybersecurity concern you see for small manufacturers? Um, the, so the top probably risk or top entry point or access point that we see for manufacturers is through phishing and spear phishing. So employees getting emails, clicking on links or opening attachments, um, but the risk of that is, or the top risk I'd say for those are, are probably ransomware. I think we've seen a, an increase in that over the last 12 months or throughout 2018, and um, I think that'll keep going. And, and that really causes havoc on a manufacturing uh, company because it inevitably causes a ton of downtime. You have to figure out if you're paying it or not paying or, or how, you, uh, you know, how you're going to manage that. Great. Uh, does your service satisfy NIST requirements? Um, yes. Yeah, so one of the most of those uh, you know, NIST requirements or, or third-party risk assessments, they all require some type of cybersecurity awareness training. I think most of them ask for annual or biannual, and, and we satisfy all of those, that part of those requirements. Okay. We had one more come in. Um, you talked about CEO fraud. What's the best way to prevent these scams? Um, the best way to prevent those types of scams is through you know, some version of two-factor authentication. So you should have a policy for your CFO and your accounting team and financial team that anytime there's a wire transfer or something like that, they do some type of a two-factor authentication. And usually enough that's enough of, or, or enough it would be calling the CEO and saying, or whoever sent the email saying, hey, did you send this to me? I just want to verify it. Um, and showing them that that, that um, is important to the organization is, is key. Uh, and that kind of goes back to the, what I talked about with leading by example. Um, if, you're, if you think that because it's the CEO, you don't have to do that second factor and you just need to get it done for them, 
um, that's not that's not creating the culture of cybersecurity awareness. So from the top, they need to support and encourage people to follow those policies, even if it takes a little bit longer than uh, not doing it. Okay. Thank you, John. That was very informative. Um, if any other further questions come to mind, uh, you can contact John directly. As you can see, his contact information is on the screen. Or you can feel free to contact us here at Catalyst Connection, and we'll work with John and the Wuvavi team to get you some answers. Thanks for attending, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Have a good afternoon. Bye.